Because I'll have you know that the only creatures that I'm running two more than one copy of are my legendaries. <laughs> Because to be to to be frank, on in the deck in the deck construction process, I discovered much to my chagrin that red and black doesn't have a lot of vanilla legendary options. <laughs> we will discuss that once we actually get to, uh, to the end of our session, Mister Cloud. Well, we're not there yet, so there. <laughs> oh, what do I do now? Um, do I escape or do I cast? Um. I am going to escape, because I do have a lot of cards in my graveyard with which I can escape. Confession Dial is going to tap. I'm going to exile the Muckrats, a Swamp, and a Mountain. And I'm going to escape Barktooth Warbeard. Okay. I kind of wish I had my Rising of the Day so that I could just swing with the motherfucker. I did have to pay seven in order to do that. Only one of those seven has to be black, so the rest are going to be red. I'm going to pay the last two mana to cast the Walking Corpse. Zombie. Zombies. When Tutu Zombie needed a name, they called it the Walking Corpse. And now Lady Orca is going to send her vengeance at you for seven. All right. I'm going to declare my Woodland Druid and my Barony Vampire as blockers. Very nice. The Woodland Druid is managing to use its meager amount of power... To s keep away the demon spirit lady. Lady Orca is destroyed, and you're down to just one creature. Mm. Hmm. <sighs> Alright, let's I do the Hail Mary. I'm, I'm going to pay one Hail Mary. in order to cast Isamaru, uh, Hound, uh, Hound of Conda. Then I'm going to spend two in order to equip Isamaru with a Prowler's Helm. Oh, yeah. Well, that honestly, that is a Hail Mary, because the thing about Hail Mary Pass is uh, the defense knows what you're doing, and they're going to send almost nobody at the quarterback so that the offensive linemen have an easy time helping to substantiate the pass play. Well, the rest of the defense sets themselves up as worthy interceptors on the ball. I'm going to put down this Swamp. And I'm going to escape once again by tapping the confession dial, exiling Queen's Bay Soldier, Price of Fame, and a mountain card in order to escape Lady Orca from the graveyard by also paying seven mana. Okay. One, two, and all of these mountains. Okay, beautiful. Okay. So Lady Orca has escaped with summoning sickness. Barktooth Warbeard is ready to strike. Yep. He's going to swing at you for five. Uh, six. Six. I will take six. Six damage has been dealt, and Gerdat has taken more damage during this game than hmm, any other game we've played today. And I'm going to end my turn on that note. Okay. Mm. All right. I'm going to spend two in order to cast a bear cub. Nice. And then I'm going to have Isamaru Hound of Conda attack you. And he can't be blocked because he's wearing the Prowler's Helm. But I am going to kill him with another Price of Fame. Okay. Boom. Dead. Mm, Gone. Uh, unattach. And deaded. Mm, all right. Um. Oh, crap. I just looked at my library. Sorry. Um, a few top cards is what I meant to do. I'm going to put both of these cards in the graveyard. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend two in order to put a Prowler's Helm uh, on my Bear Cub. Yeah, yeah, now he's wearing a cute little helmet. Yes, I will end. Cute, cute little critter. Okay. Uh, I think we can see which way the wind is blowing in this game. Uh, I'm going to put down a Swamp. I'm going to pay... Wait... Maybe, maybe, just, just maybe that is a move. Uh, but that that would be silly though. Of course, I should swing out right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna swing at you with everything that actually has a non-zero number amount of power. That's thirteen and fifteen. Okay. How do you respond? I'm gonna ha declare my Cabal Evangel as a blocker for Lady Orca. All right. Are you going to declare any other blockers? Nope. 
Okay, so damage step time. You take eight damage, and Cabal Evangel is now destroyed. Second main phase time. I'm going to pay three in order to cast the Morbid Curiosity, and I'm going to sacrifice Barktooth Warbeard to the Morbid Curiosity, so I draw seven cards. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Awesome. And now I can pay another three to cast Rising of the Day. I can pay one to cast the Metallic Sliver. Ooh. I'm not surprised that, sli that the Metallic Sliver doesn't have any keywords on it. Well, that's because it gets keywords from every other sliver in the game. <laughs> well, a majority of the slivers actually come with keywords that they spread about. I'm also going to pay two to cast the Bronze Sable. Okay. The champion stood alone between the Horde of the Returned and the Shrine of the Karamatra. And then uh, let's let's also pay two to cast the Bane Alley Backguard. Okay. I'm sorry, Bane Alley Blackguard. I mean, for goodness sake, he's got a title, flavor text, power and toughness, I, and, and creature types. I should read it correctly. He's in the field of procurement. What he's about to gather for me is your death. I'm going to end my turn now. Okay, then. Well, it's a bit late for you to show up, but oh well. I'm going to spend three in order to cast an Alpine Grizzly. Hmm. I Got would. a lot of bears. Find it unbearable how many duplicates you have in your deck, Mr. Gardat. <laughs> so I'm All running right. triplets of, of each of my legendaries and doubles of, of each of my other critters. I see. Each of your other critters. Yep. So you could have had twice as many different cards with different names. Yes. P potentially, that's that's okay though. It's okay. I think I think by now we've just about made our point, and we will go over the details of which points we're going to make about vanilla matchups. But for now, it is time for you to d die. Behold, going to pay five. Natural cast Yargle. Okay. And he has haste. Yes, he does. And Lady Orca, also, I should have given her more power. So now she's an 8-4 creature. Mm -hmm. And then I can also tap the Confession Dial. Pay 7. Exile, uh, Price of Fame, a Swamp, and a Morbid Curiosity for my graveyard. And I'm going to escape Barktooth Warbeard. He escapes... And he gets one power, and he gains haste. It's time to kill you. At last. Rush, my army of motley demons. All right. I'm going to have my bear nine. cub uh, block your bronze sable, and I'm going to have alpine grizzly block uh, Yargle. All right. So during the blocking step, you take 12 less damage from this onslaught. Alpine Grizzly does kill Yargle. Bronze Sable also is destroyed. And you take 9, 11, 12, 19 damage. And part of that was Legendary type. Good Woo! game, Mr. Cloud. Good game, Mr. Gardat. See, I, I suppose after all, we finally followed through that... Uh, we had some expectation for a lengthy game, and that indeed was a lengthy game. So, we going into R3? <laughs> uh, oh, boy. You know what? I'm I'm spent. Okay. I, I am I am definitely spent at this point, Mr. Gretab. I appreciate the offer. Mm, all right. So, let me see. Did I actually get to show off everything that I was uh, that I was uh, trying to do here? Almost. The, I there was there are two cards that I did not actually get to show off, Mr. Cloud. Huh. There's only one card in my deck that I didn't get to show off. How about that? Okay, so it is view library. Uh, this one, which I drew into and didn't get and didn't cast, and Kithkin army. 
or rather armor. So yeah, um, I do have a specific problem with uh, uh, with this format uh, because one of the other things that uh, one of the other rules that I'm pretty sure was on the uh, list uh, for Magic the Gallery was that we weren't supposed to actually be using burn or alternate win conditions, right? Well, okay, okay. Wait, alternate uh, alternate win cons are cards that say you win the game or target opponent loses the game, which, of course, would lead a player to win the game if that player stands alone at the table as of that player losing the game. So, yes, we ban cards that do that. We did not ban cards that deal damage. However, you can't win the game by causing a player to take more damage than he has life points if the source is not by a legendary creature. Mm, yeah. Still, I should. I probably should have tried to put in either Corrupt or Drain Lives. Meh. I see. So, uh, my big issue uh, with this particular format is actually one of the uh, fo foundational pieces of it, and that is there are extremely few legendary uh, uh, vanilla creatures. Like, you, the whole reason why we're both getting, running Yargle is because in a format where he only has to deal with... Uh, with vanilla creatures, Yargle is actually really, really big for his mana cost. The whole reason that I'm running Yargle and Multani is because for six mana, it's twice as big as normal Yargle is, and that actually would have come up a little. Uh, that would have definitely come up specifically with its uh, with its six toughness for a majority of your creatures. Right. <clears throat> Leopard spotted Jiao. Lot of good candidates for vanilla creatures. However, a lot of these creatures have the same power toughness as well as mana value and color, but they differ on the basis of creature type. Yes. Um, one of the more popular stat lines for aggressive vanilla creatures is a three drop that's a three that's a three two. Alpine Bears is one of the few is one of the few instances where it being a green creature pushes up to four two. I um, doing this specifically does allow us to explore what the vanilla card design is like because vanilla card design uh, uh, tends to have uh, tends to be power crept specifically on how uh, the uh, the mana is assigned. But to be perfectly honest, because of the uh, dense uh, card pool that Magic the Gathering has, you usually end up, uh, especially when you're doing you know what is effectively an unlimited format like this. You end up just, uh, go, uh, at least when I was building, I ended up just looking for, you know, cards of this particular stat line that I was looking for, uh, uh, specifically on the aggressive end. Yeah, that... I mean, I mean, how about that? Because of because of the format decisions I made in creating Magic the Gallery, that the, the, the non-legendary vanillas honestly came second hat, although... I suppose I would challenge that. I would also challenge that assertion on the other side of the coin that most of the damage you dealt to me during these games was dealt by non-legendary creatures. Yes. So they serve the purpose of weakening the opponent so that you could eventually deal the final blow with your unblockable legendary. Specif specifically Isamaru. Isamaru is such a good puppy dog. Hmm. I was actually surprised that you did not play any removal during these games. Well, the whole reason being is because removal is supposed uh, is in it is in concept supposed to deal with creature threats, and if we're both uh, limited to running specifically of, of vanilla creatures, then the only thing that I have to really worry about is creature stat lines. Thing is, creature stat lines only actually uh, only actually matter if I'm actually uh, going into combat with these creatures. And the win con was get out my legendary creature and put him and put unblockable on them. So I don't really need to worry about your creature stat lines. Right, like much in the same, like neither of us really had to worry about the non-legendary creature stat lines for much of the game. Because life points were it, it, among the games that we've played, I think it. I think this is the most like overtly and questionably pertinent that life points in general are expendable. Having life points is just a condition that says you get to keep playing. In this case, however, we took it to the ridiculous extreme by automatically giving each other an ability that says you can't lose the game under any circumstances unless. <laughs> Mm. 
12. Um, and the, the thing about vanilla creatures also, of course, is they, the, you're, you're, you're not really going to see like any of them in modern magic is the problem. Um, they're usually second, they usually play second fiddle to creatures that do have abilities, like at least one. I mean, f anything, first strike, trample. Uh, it deals an additional damage if it touches a player. There's How many white two drops do you know that actually have uh, had that actually have double strike despite being a one one? Exactly. Um, that ad act actually having abilities is the reason why most cre most creature spells in Magic: The Gathering do have abilities is because they are favored and in demand. <laughs> On the opposite side of that coin. Um, was glaringly obvious in the design process and mentality of Magic the Gathering uh, early, in early stages, is most of the legendary vanilla creatures were produced before the year 2000. After that, honestly, I think we saw most of them appear during this game. Isamaru, Yargul, Yargul, and Maltani. There are, there, what there are other creatures. What legendary creatures do you think existed before the year 2000? Uh, there, there were, there were a bunch, there were a bunch of them, dude. Um, I mean, you, play, I found you played Jasmine, one of them. You I, played Jasmine, I uh, but I couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of anyone else. Like a majority uh, of the, there's also a majority of the Archangel legendary Gabriel creatures from Legends specifically have card effects on them. Right, but not all of them had card effects. Can you think of any of them that don't? Um. Well, I mean, I mean, mind you, I did look at the really short list of vanilla legendary creatures, but I didn't memorize ah, it. Okay. And uh, also, just as a note on uh, making this format yourself, if you and your friends want to do this um, in your own spare time, uh, Magic the Gathering does not use flavor text as a part of the description of cards. So if you want to filter out cards in order to select only vanilla type creatures, all you have to do is go to your descriptions filter and eliminate every one of the 26 letters of the alphabet so that the only cards that will show up essentially are cards that have no description whatsoever. And boom, you got lots of vanilla creatures to choose from, build a deck, see if you can make something fun with it. All right, so this has been us doing Magic the Gallery. Um, I honestly think that this would have been more interesting for me if we had uh, if we had just decided to try and do stuff uh, related to the artists or how what uh, specific arts are uh, we we enjoyed. But oh well, um, it will be my turn next, and I'm not sure what we're doing next because you know we uh, kind of start winging these after a while. How about the Julie Barrow matchup? Which is. You can only play cards that were illustrated specifically by Julie Barrow. <laughs> um, the thing is, uh, she probably has a very pro prolific, pro um, a prolific resume for her card arts. I don't know what it is though. So, uh, sh I know she did the artwork for Gwendolyn de Corchi from from the Urborg set. Yeah. Ah, All right, everyone, times. be safe. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.